Good morning, Floss Tube. Happy May 1st. Bit of a surprise video. I didn't know if all the pieces were going to align that would allow me to create this video, but I had this idea. And so the thing is, is if you watched my last video, you know that I've been feeling the new starts, which is good. It's fine, but there's just no room in my life for mania. <laughs> Um, which is the uh, group effort in May to start a whole bunch of things. And I think there are different methods of doing so, where you can literally start something new every day, where you can uh, do the blimey cat method, which is where you start new things on days that you haven't previously started new things in May and then work on those old whips on their sort of anniversaries. And I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I, um, I have a lot of whips and I know I haven't done an official whip parade yet, but this is sort of a mini whip parade because there's going to be things in here that I don't think you've ever seen before. Uh, but I'm doing something that I'm calling mayhem. And I think Two Martini Stitcher also has a mayhem. I'm not 100% sure exactly how her mayhem works. But I'm thinking of doing it like this. So a bit of an explanation. So I'm picking 10 projects, 10 whips, and working on them for three days each, which gets us to 30 days. And then the 31st, I get a new start. Right, sort of as a reward for working on old projects for 30 days. And if I get any finishes during that time, then it's a bonus start. And I think that might just be enough to wiggle my little brain <laughs> to be like, okay, we can do this. So I'm going to show you my works in progress that I'm going to pick, uh, that I've picked. And then my plan is to have sort of an update video on where my mayhem progress is, and we can go from there. All right. So the first thing that I've picked for my, uh, my first mayhem project, so starting today, and I did work on it a little bit this morning, get my morning stitches in, is Praiseworthy Cottage, no, Praiseworthy Stitches CD Pumpkin Cottage. This is a really cute, Halloween piece. This house is full on, <laughs> full coverage. It's got beads, um, French knots, specialty threads. It's really cute. It's really, really lovely. Uh, I started this last year, sometime around Halloween, maybe before Halloween. And I am currently here. So I told you I did start it this morning because uh, I did put my morning stitches in. I added these bricks and I come up here and I added this window frame and I, add, I started filling in this window. It's a little hard to see. Um, I am stitching this with the called for floss, which is a bunch of specialty floss. It's a combination of weeks and uh, gentle arts. And I am stitching this one over two on, I know I have the tag in here. Fiber on a whim, silver fox, 40 count. So, um, this does have beads, as I said, which is a little tricky on 40 count. There are, I forget if it's the Delicos or not, hang on. They're the Petites. And it's just the two colors. It's, uh, it's red <coughs> and green. Um, that's 42031 and 42043. I don't know if that matters, but. So I'm a slightly concerned about the beads on 40 count, but they're not, um, it's not like a mirabilia where the beads are sort of stacked on, on one another. 
they are sort of like provided as accents. Um, this also has buttons, like a button pack from just another button company, which I haven't purchased yet, but which is in stock. And I should probably just, should buy it. Um, the problem is, is there's so many cute other things on just another button, um, or just a button that I, I want to, <laughs> I want to buy all the things when I go there. So that's whip one. So today counts as day one, and then uh, Wednesday will be day three, and then on Thursday I will start my next whip. Oops, we're gonna try and stack them here. And you've seen this one before. It is Winter Cat by Cooler Designs. I'm gonna stitch the May section, which I've decided is gonna be down here in these paper whites. I have put some stitches in it since you saw it last. I've done more of the back stitching, though I didn't finish the back stitching for April. Um, oops. But this is where we're at. You can see the squirrel's not back stitched yet, but I did work on the birdhouse. I put in like the amaryllis over here, and I started working on the cardinals. So I'm going to work on the May section. Now, it's only three days, so I likely won't finish the May section, so I may be a little behind in my goals, um, my larger goals to, to have a section of this completed every month. But I think it'll be far enough along with just the regular stitching that I can um, do some makeup in June. So I'm looking forward to that. This is also um, called for Call for Floss, which is DMC, minus, uh, there's two pink substitutions I've made um, that are very similar to the Call for DMC. And instead of on 14 count Ada, I'm stitching this on 28 count Lugana. It's looking really good though. I really love the back stitching. It really brings it to life. So that's whip number two. So whip number three, you've also seen, which is Renato Perlin's There As Always. This one I'm hoping I can get as a finish to get that sort of bonus start. Um, all that's left is to finish the border, finish the flower down here. Um, I have my initials, but I need to date it. So this is my own floss conversion uh, using DMC, the DMC numbers to convert to fancy floss. And this is on a 40 count x Designs Little Bunny. And I did do stitches on this, so I've added like some more pinks and things like that. But I need to, I need to just bring this vine over. Okay, so whip number four is one that I'm pretty sure you haven't seen before. It's Al Forest Embroidery Dinosaurs. I'm stitching this for my son. Uh, he loves dinosaurs. He's six, so. Um, I started this one two years ago, I think. Maybe a year and a half. I have the anniversary dates in my Excel sheet, but I didn't bring it with me. My plan for this is, instead of this palm tree, here in the in the center that's where I'm gonna put his birth details so I'm gonna change this into like a birth sampler for him so and then this is where I'm at just grab a piece of paper because it's we're dealing with a little bit of a cloudy sky here in New Jersey today so this is where I'm at get that big old brontosaurus done this is kit fabric and kit floss uh, from Al Forest. So Al Forest does some really lovely tonal variegated floss. Um, and I'm not sure what the fabric color is, but it's a 28 count. It's looking really pretty though. I really like that brontosaurus. That will not be a finish. It is, it is a big old chart. So I'm, I've really only stitched over here in this section and there's like a border and I still have to chart his details and but that's fine I need to get some work done on it you know how it is the bright and shiny the bright and shiny took over so next is Halloween wreath which you've seen but I will show it again briefly a little zip there sorry so Halloween wreath so the um, 
The May section hasn't come out yet. It'll come out on the third and it'll be this section here. And where I'm at, if you watched my last video, is here. So getting there, um, again, similarly, I likely will not be finishing the May section in the three days that I've allotted it, but I wanted to make sure that I gave it time to like work on it so that I didn't fall really far behind. And three days, I can get a good amount of stitching done in three days, um, barring any work craziness. So this is on the kit fabric and floss, which is uh, DMC, called for DMC and 28 count pewter by Picture This Plus. So we'll work on that. After that, we've got Hemlock and Rye Thurza, Priscilla Dawes. I have my really beaten up <laughs> cover page. Uh, this comes in the two colorways. It's the sort of faded front version and the bright back version. I'm basing mine off of the front of the back, the, the brights version, but I did a conversion to Sulky, my own conversion to Sulky. Sorry, it's on a little bit piece of, big piece of fabric here. I'll just try to wrangle it for you. And this is where I'm at. Every time I pull her out, she's so beautiful. So, um, yeah, like I said, my own, my own sulky conversion, it's v definitely very bright. Uh, the mailman decided to come by and my dogs thought that'd be a really great time to let their opinions be known. So yeah, like, as I was saying, it's, uh, it's very bright and it's looking very colorful, very beautiful. This is on a... Mm -hmm. 32 count Oaken Lugana. So my whip after that is the May section of Spring Cat by Cooler Designs. I haven't worked on this since you've seen it last, but I've started down here and the May section is gonna be um, over here, so I'm gonna just bring the width across. I'll do that bunny in the um, viola. Had to look at what the name of the flower was. I was thinking pansy, but I'm like, I don't think that's a pansy. Yep, so it hasn't seen much love since then, but I'll bring it across. I'll see if I can also maybe finish working on that nest. <laughs> and this is similarly to Winter Cat. It's on 28 Cat Lugana Antique White with the called for DMC. What I loved about this plan is it gives me the opportunity to work on the things that I would want to work on anyway, but also allows me to touch things that I haven't touched in a while. So my next one is a fan favorite from Flo from Flossmas, my Flossmas videos, which is the Renato Peril in Christmas. It's not a very great picture of it, but you get the idea. Just be careful looking for this chart. There are some knockoff versions out there, especially on Amazon, and they don't look good. So they'll show this picture, but you the charting is not the same. So um, you can buy this chart on the Renato Perlin Etsy. And it's been a minute since I've looked at this one, so I forget where it's at. Oh, that's right. So I've got three tiers of the tree done. But I haven't added, like over the top of this, there's like owls. And then I think on this side, it's presents. 
So I've got a bit to go. This is in mostly the called for DMC. Um, there are some substitutions for some fancy floss, like the, the yellow is an over dyed. I've switched this out to a Diamant um, for some sparkle, which you can't really see. It stands out. So you'll see that right there is the called for. And instead I'm doing it in this really bright white. And that's like all along the snow and stuff too. I think it looks really nice. It's a pain in the butt to work with, but it's pretty, so that's okay. Uh, this is stitched on a 40 count buttermilk by Fiber on a Whim. All right. So my next whip is also one which I might have shown back when I was doing like some knitting videos, but I haven't shown it on my floss tube proper. So this is Antong Ufendel 1835 from Hands Across the Sea. And um, I don't have the sisters version. I have the, the single chart. So the there's another sister, um, another Ufendel. But this is where we're at. I am stitching this. With a Vicky Clayton silk conversion. So I've got the silks here. And I'm stitching it on a 40 count R&R &R, um, in American chestnut. Sorry, it's really big. And that's where I'm at. That's a little hard to see. Let's put something behind those stitches. There, so you can see it a little better. Not really. <laughs> it's so bright. One second. I have a very clever idea. Very wrinkly. It's been living in a bag for a while. So, as I said, this is with the Vicky Clayton silks, and it's on 40 count R and R American chestnut, and this is the width of it. So that border, the green border, goes all the way to the edge, and it'll come down. I'll bring that a little closer. There is one over one. So this is over one, this is over one. That's all the only, there's, there's more over one, but those are the only two over one motifs that I've done. And so for the over one sections on 40 count, I just do half stitches. Um, and the nice thing about the Vicky Clayton silks is they're thin, they're, they're thin enough. Um, that there, it's not, it doesn't stand out too much. Let's see if I can show you the, so you can see it stands out a little, but not too bad. This one's definitely a little poofier, but I think it looks pretty good. And I love the colors. And this, it needs some love. I haven't worked on this one in a while and I love it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And like those, oh, the colors are so pretty. So, it needs some attention. <laughs> and I thought this would be a good way to, to give it to it. And then finally, my last whip that I wanna work on is the Witchy Stitcher Cryptids. And I don't have the cover sheet because it's online. So this is what it's supposed to look like. 
and I'm stitching this with mostly the called for DMC. Um, I think I have a couple conversions in there. I've changed the brown to the browns and one of the greens to over dyed just for a little bit of effect. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count uh, picture this plus murky. And this is where I'm at. So this is the bottom of the cryptids. It's still, and I still need to do the border, but it's, there's like another two columns. So I've got a long way to go. I started this during the stitch along. So there were a lot of squirrels in my life at this time. <laughs> Um, the, if you're curious about the stitch, um, the needle minder, that's from, oh, I can't remember. Where did you come from? I believe it's from Mad for Minders. Mad for Minders. That's what it was. Yeah. So it's looking very good. I really love it. I really, I really want to finish it. So that's my plan. Now, I want to keep to my plan so that I can have a new start on the 31st and potentially two new starts if I can finish the Renato Perlin. and this is always, or there is always. I don't know what those starts are yet, except for one. I know what one start is gonna be, and that is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Secret Castle, which is another mystery stitch along. I bought it already. It comes out on the 25th. So, <clears throat> like the first clue is released on the 25th. And I am real hyped about it. I'm not gonna lie. So, that'll be my start probably on the 31st. But for my bonus start, I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do yet. I have a lot of things kitted. And when I say a lot of things kitted, I mean. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully I'll have a video out in about two weeks. If not on a, maybe I could do it a little before two weeks. So I could show like four projects and we can kind of see how much work I get done. Uh, some of these days are harder than others. Like on Wednesdays, I commute into the city. It's a little harder to get my stitches done. And I don't have like time in the morning like I normally do because I work remotely the rest of the time. So Wednesdays are a little rough, but I'm going to try and get some stitches in in the evening. And that is my plan for mayhem. So if you'd like to join me, you can pick your own whips and I'd love to see what you're working on and what your goals are. And if you have planned starts or even if you're participating in mania, that's fine. I'd love to see what you're starting. You know, let me know. Um, if you have a floss tube, drop it below. I'd love to check out new creators. Um, part of the reason why I started doing this is I just wanted to give back to the community because I watch a lot of floss tube. Um, and so yeah, if you if you know of any creators or if you are a creator yourself, drop a comment, let me know. I'd love to see what you've done and what your plans are. And I hope you have a great May, whatever you whatever your goals are for the for the month. And I'll talk to you soon. All right.